Welcome to iLecture Online. On the previous two videos, we found the volume of a structure that was developed when we took an area defined by the various curves and first rotated it around the x-axis and then rotated it around the y-axis. So we end up with two different volumes. And if we did around the x-axis, if you remember, the volume was equal to uh, 2 pi. And when we revolved around the y-axis, the volume was equal to 4 pi. Now, let's say this was a test question and you're not sure you did it correctly and you want to have some, hmm, some near certainty that it was close to being correct. Well, what you could do is you can approximate the structure of that and then simply use geometry to find the volume. For example, when we revolve this around the y-axis, you get kind of a tire structure. Now you can flatten out the tire, get kind of like the average height, and they end up with kind of a a cylinder or a tire, a hollow tire, that you can then easily find the volume of. So let's try that. So first we're going to do around the y-axis. And if you take this structure right here, if you take this and you revolve it around, even though you get something that looks like this, you can kind of flatten it out and get the average height so that you end up with a structure that kind of looks like this. And it would be hollow on the inside, like this. And you can see that the radius of the inside would be 1 and the radius of the outside would be 3. So this would be 1, this here would be 3. What about the height? Well, notice that at, at this point on the inside, when we plug in x equals 1, then the height would be 2 here and the height would be 1 here. So 2 minus 1 would be 1. So the thickness here would be 1 on the inside. And then as it goes to the outside, notice that here you get 2 thirds, here you get one-third, so it would be one-third. So the height is one on the inside, one-third on the outside, so the average height is about one-half. So I would say that the average height would be one-half, about uh, one on the inside and one-third the outside kind of averages out to about one-half. Again, these are just approximations. So let's find the volume of that. So the volume is equal to the area, which is pi, times the outer radius, which is three squared, minus the inner radius, which is 1 squared, times the thickness, 1 half. So again, that would be the area of the base, so to speak. So you take the outer radius, the inner radius, subtract the two to only get this portion. You then get rid of the whole, and then you multiply it times the height, which is 1 half. So this would be equal to pi times 9 minus 1 times 1 half. So this would be pi times 4, oh, not 4, I'm getting ahead of myself. That would be 8 times 1 half, so that would be equal to 4 pi. And notice, our quick approximation of volume is exactly the same as the one that we calculated. Now, that just happened to be by chance, but at least it gives you the feel that you're close and that you probably did it correctly. How about if we do it in this direction, around the x-axis? take a look and see what would happen if we now revolve it around the x-axis. So we end up with something like a, a curved vase. Then if we straighten it out, we end up with something that looks like kind of a, a cylinder. Like this. And that has a certain length. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Now, so what happens is we take this thing that looks curved and we flatten it out and we revolve it around the x-axis like this. So the length is the easiest part. The length goes from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So the length from there to there is equal to 2. The inner radius, notice that this is 1 because uh, we have 1 over x. So plug in x equals 1, we get 1 for the height. And here we get um, a third for the height. So the average height would be about a half because it drops out more quickly here than it does there. So the inner radius would be about one half for the inner radius. What about the outer radius? Well, notice the outer radius would be a two right there and would be one right here. But it would be much closer to one for most of the time. So maybe 1.2 or something like that. Yeah, let's... 1.2 might be a good way to think about it. So 1.2, which is equal to, um, hmm, that would be 6 fifth because it's always easier to put in the fraction format. So the inner rate is about a half, the outer rate is about 6 fifth, the length is about 2. 
What's the volume of that? Well, the volume is equal to pi times the inner radius, uh, no, the outer radius, which is 6 over 5 squared minus the inner radius, which is 1 half squared. And then we have to multiply the whole thing by the length, which is 2. And again, what we're trying to find is the volume, which we said was about 2 pi. Well, exactly 2 pi when we used the, uh, when we used the integration. So volume is equal to pi times 6 over 5 squared, it would be 36 over 25, minus 1 half squared would be 1 fourth times 2. All right, so notice that this can be written as 6 over 24, which is approximately equal to 6 over 25. Again, we want to make it easy on ourselves, so volume is equal to pi times, and that would be 36 over 25 minus 6 over 25. I know it's 6 over 24, but we're just looking for the approximate value times 2. So 36 minus 6 is 30, so we end up with, this is equal to pi times 30 over 25 times 2. Well, that would be equal to 60 over 25 times pi, 60 over 25 times pi, which is approximately equal to about 2.4 pi. Well, again, it's just approximate, but notice my actual value was 2 pi, and my rough estimation of the volume was 2.4 pi. That's not off by that much. And so again, it gives us a certain amount of feeling that we got kind of close. Again, this is not a bad thing to do if you're taking a test. You have a little extra time. You just finished your integrations. You just want to get a feel that you're kind of in the ballpark. Do a quick rough word of estimation. Get the approximate shape, the approximate dimensions, quickly figure out the volume, and notice in the first case we're spot on, the second case we're off by a little bit, but again clo close enough to feel that we did it correctly, and that is how it's done. With these calculus, right? Well, if you want the exact value, you still want to do calculus. <laughs> but if it's close enough among friends, this is a good technique.